Good morning, Valley. Today on Valley Por Vida, we've got a lot in store for you. We'll be giving you, you an inside look at what the robotics team students are learning in FAR. We've got tips for how to keep your kids safe as they use cell phones for education and entertainment purposes, plus an exclusive sit down with the Power Rangers actor who will be visiting the RGV. Now there's so much going on and we've got you covered. Valley Por Vida starts right now. Hi there, and thanks again for joining us this morning. I'm your host, Danielle Bonda. Well, during quarantine, we saw an increase in the amount of time that kids use their cell phones. Whether it's for educational or entertainment purposes, it's important to monitor their cell behavior and ensure their safety. Now, some parents wonder, uh, when should their child even get a cell phone? Well, we went ahead and spoke with a kid's cell phone expert for helpful tips to keep in mind. Go ahead and take a look at today's Safety Check segment. Well, good morning. Great to be with everyone this morning. My name is Bill Brady. I'm the CEO of Trumi Wireless. Thrilled to be here to talk a little bit about kids' cell phone safety and these important issues. Hey, every parent in America is dealing with these, uh, these questions right now because every child comes home and says, I'm the only kid that doesn't have a cell phone. And uh, so we're dealing with these questions of when to introduce phones to kids and, and what should we give them uh, in order to give them something that's safe but still flexible for them. So the right age really depends on every child and every different family situation uh, because people have different needs, different maturity levels. So we really encourage parents to be deliberate and take a hard look at what is my child going to use the device for? What do they, they really need? and then give them something to start with that's appropriate for their age. So we suggest starting younger kids with a, a really limited approach of talk and text only, and then introduce more functionality from there. You know, the pandemic has changed every everything and everyone's on their devices more. And uh, we really encourage parents to, to be involved in their kids' uh, media usage and cell phone usage and device usage in general. There's some things that are obvious to watch for, you know, content issues like pornography and violence. Uh, and then there are the, the less obvious things like stress, anxiety, depression, that frequently come when kids spend so much time on social media comparing themselves to other kids or a lot of time on video games where it becomes this just obsession and addiction that actually causes them to check out a life uh, a little bit. So those are things to, to definitely watch for. So we encourage devices where parents can uh, really set access and time limits for the different functions of a phone. Uh, with our solution, for example, during the day, you can have it set up so the kids have access to the educational uh, aspects, the educational apps, for example, uh, but not to, to, to anything else. And, and then during the off hours, you can make other, other things available. Uh, but definitely parents have got to be involved in, in watching. Uh, even with the best parental controls, I never suggest to parents, hey, just check out. You've, you've got to be a parent and be involved. Yes, so we've just launched uh, Trumi Wireless. And the big differentiator between our solution and others is our Kids Smart Operating System, which really allows parents to, to introduce a device to a younger child with very limited functionality and then graduate them into increasing levels of responsibility based on their needs and maturity. One of the big aspects of that is our suite of kids smart apps. 
which we've curated and vetted for safety. So if you're choosing, if you're putting those apps on the phone from our, our Trumi parent portal, you can have a high degree of confidence that they're gonna be safe. Hey, thanks Danielle for having me on. I hope this has been a great time with your viewers and hope this advice uh, will help everyone keep their kids safe on cell phones. And we hope that everyone can keep in mind these tips to ensure your child is safe while navigating through their cell phone for educational or entertainment purposes. You can feel free to visit the website on your screen if you'd like more info. All right, well, the robotics team Vanguard Rembrandt has been working long hours juggling high school, college courses, and extracurriculars while creating special projects for competitions. Now, their students are excited to learn engineering tactics, and they look forward to what the future has to offer. So our team went ahead and caught up with two of their team members for an inside look at what they've been working on since quarantine. Check it out. The robotics team is basically uh, a club at our school that we're currently uh, competing in. Uh, for us in high school, we compete in FTC. Not big, but like a medium competition. For FTC, we basically get a new challenge every single year. And this challenge uh, can be from throwing rings to picking up blocks and moving things around the ring. And uh, we basically have uh, an 18 by 18 by 18 space to build this robot and uh, to do and compete in each of these uh, challenges. And uh, basically what we do is that we come in together, we brainstorm and put our ideas together to, uh, to get a final. Teamwork is a very important factor. Um, everybody puts in uh, every, all their efforts. Uh, it can be from the driver to the coach to just the, the team manager. Everybody can pitch an idea randomly. Everybody is uh, is stumped and they don't know what to what to do next. And uh, such as Anthony, Anthony comes in with a bunch of uh, ideas for the robot, and they actually come out and perform perform well. So uh, teamwork and putting in all our ideas together uh, really helps out at the end. So uh, for me, FTC, it's it's like an opportunity for like young engineers to showcase off their engineering skills. Uh, we go through all the process that real engineers go through, which is designing a robot, um, designing, performing, and then like even writing down and uh, taking down everything that we do to the robot. So I, our overall goal is to continue in this path at engineering. And in FTC, I think our overall goal is to compete and uh, have success in competing. The competitions are actually really, they're, they're really fun to, to go to. Uh, we, we actually, we're paired up with an alliance every match, which is just a random team, and it can be from any other school. So we're usually paired up with bigger schools since uh, we go against, I think, five and six A schools. So we're usually paired up with these bigger schools, and it's a, it's a great opportunity. We all learn from each other. We take ideas, they take ideas, and it's a very friendly environment as well. First Robotics is known for, for being a very uh, friendly team a bonding experience and it's just it's just a really great experience overall to compete so uh first gives us an opportunity to actually uh work as engineers at, at a high school level so we're doing everything that real engineers do um and we're, we're actually i feel like it's preparing us for our future because that's our future right now which is just technology uh technology keeps on growing and growing and growing and growing and they're going to need more engineers and starting this off at a young age like this, first giving this opportunity to start off at a young age, it's, it's really beneficial for us. Even though it was such a very big negative or many people viewed it as a negative, uh, robotics was a big positive for us as in, as when Mr. Flores said, when we brought the robot back to home, we were able to work together here as we weren't able to connect or uh, join together before in the past. And that let us uh, come in together and be with each other and work on something that's good for us, you know, um, that gives us a lot of, uh, lessons and working together it, it just really brings out together i'm really grateful for our team um everybody helps me out 
everybody helps each other out. I help them, they help me, you know. Everybody everybody puts in their part and uh, I'm very I'm very grateful for for my team and also my coaches. They they have always been there for us and they've always uh pushed us as well uh to keep on keep our focus on the robot. And uh, yes, it, it I'm just very grateful for it. The the people I have there at my school. Robotics at Vanguard is really for anyone. Like not only engineering majors, I'm actually going more into the medical field, but I joined robotics for the teamwork aspect because I know in the medical field, there's a lot of teamwork going on. And teamwork is a very big part of robotics. Uh, you have to come together as a team, you have to put your brains together, compromise, you know, because not everyone agrees. And there's times where we don't agree and we have to find a solution and compromise, just like in any real life situation. So whether you're going into the medical field, whether you're going into engineering, or into anything else that you're doing, there's a lot of skills that you will learn in uh, robotics that will help you move on and like be better at what you want to be, even if it's not engineering. We're excited to see their robotics team flourish and look forward to seeing where their engineering education will take them in the future. If your child would like to join the team or if you'd like more information, you can feel free to visit one of the websites on your screen. All right, well, it's time now to take a commercial break, and then we've got to look at your local weather updates. But be sure to stay tuned because Valley Por Vida will be back. And we'll be bringing you an exclusive sit down with one Power Rangers actor who's making his way to the RGV for a special meet and greet that you won't want to miss. Those details plus more coming up. 